All right, guys. So welcome again. So CSE 102. Uh, what we will be doing today, I trust that everyone finished the quiz and, and it's all been submitted and, and done. Uh, so <clears throat> what we will do today is be somewhat of a short day. If, it, if we can get started, there it is. Uh, okay. All right. So you can look at these comics uh, whenever you are uh, later free. Uh, these slides are available on the uh, lecture slides folder. Uh, so what we'll talk is we'll do is we will talk about the midterm coming up next week today. And because that's all I really have planned for today, because of the holiday tomorrow, I expect that we'll get out of here pretty early today and you can have an, an early start on your weekend uh, on. Uh, and I know I know they, they locked us down again uh, for tomorrow, so it's not like you're, many of you are probably going anywhere, but yeah, you know, at least you know, early start on getting getting some rest or something. I don't know. So, all right. So we'll talk about the midterm, what the what you can expect, what the format is of it. We'll do some review uh, a little bit, and I'll open it up for questions. I have an example at the end of something that we can do as well. Okay. So the exam is a week from today at this time. So. I know you don't have any other classes, or well, you shouldn't have any other classes uh, that are going on in the uh, 1.30 to 3.30 time slot. Uh, so uh, you should uh, be able to attend this, right? Uh, we will do this on a Teams slash Forms model, just like we've done the previous exams in last semester. And this exam will count for 100 points and it will be 20% of your final grade. So if you want to look at it as uh, every five points on the exam is one point of your final grade, if, if that's how you want to look at it, and if that helps you kind of break up the exam into, into manageable chunks, uh, great. If that just makes you freak out, five points is one point of my grade, like, that makes you like kind of scared, and don't worry, don't. please don't do that. I do not want you to be nervous. I want you to be prepared, right? So if you are prepared, there's you should not have any reason to be nervous. If you understand the material, if you understand how to uh, perform the tasks that we've discussed so far in this in this course, then you should be great. Okay. All right. What will be on the exam, Hojam? Some of you are probably saying to yourselves. So everything that we've covered up until this class, so that's object-oriented thinking, that's inheritance, that's UML, basic UML, it's exceptions, exception handling, it's testing. Testing will be covered as part of this exam. Um, you guys know I really like testing. Abstract classes and interfaces as well. It does not mean that you should forget about your stuff we covered in 101, okay? All the stuff that we've done, <coughs> all the stuff that we've done so far this semester built upon what you should have learned in 101. So it's all part of it. So don't forget all that stuff. It'll be part of it too, um, but it will not be, um, I'm not gonna ask you like a simple question about an if statement, but an if statement may be part of some other question, okay? I like to do kind of three big um, sections. I'm not sure how. I haven't written the exam yet, so I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to be able to do that for this exam using the MS Teams, uh, MS Forms format. So I, I know the first two big sections there that I have, the quick answer and the program flow, I should be able to do that just fine on a uh, – in Microsoft Forms based exam. 
The last one is going to be a little bit harder for me to figure out, uh, but I do have some ideas. Okay, but I do want you to show that you understand how to implement something, right? Okay. All right. So multiple choice, you guys know what multiple choice is, right? These are the examples that we went over last semester in 101. So what is the value of this expression? A, B, C, or D, right? This one's not too hard, shouldn't be. No. <coughs> yes. Okay. Great. Somebody answered. Good. Right. Okay. Or A. Right. Yeah. So uh, let me go back to here. Yeah. All right. So A. Now, had any of these values been uh, decimal, like 4.0 or 2.0, suddenly this becomes 11.0 instead. Right, and had I put nice little parentheses around the one and the two so that that was done first, then this would have been 13, right? So, uh, so yeah, order of operations and knowing that integer arithmetic results in integer values. Okay, and another example from last year, the values passed to a method are called its B, yes, right, arguments or parameters, okay? This next one, the true-false section, is one that I, I, I go over this with, with my students every semester, and some of you, I don't know if you, I don't know if you're not listening to me, I don't know if you don't trust me, I don't know if, yeah, I don't know why, but First example, a method must always return a value, right? This is false. Do you remember one easy way to tell why this is false if it's an exam that I've written? Yes, right. I don't like always and never statements, right? Always and never, mm -hmm. nope, I don't, I don't go in for that, okay? There's a, a, a quote from uh, uh, Star Wars Revenge of the Sith where Obi-Wan is confronting Anakin after he's kind of converted to the dark side and basically Anakin kind of has the attitude. He says something to the effect of, you know, if you're not with me, you're against me. And, and uh and Obi-Wan responds, only Sith deal in absolutes. And uh, I, I don't I don't want to be a Sith. I don't want to I don't want to be a, a Darth Vader. OK, so I, I don't I don't deal in absolutes very frequently. What about this one, right? We talked about this one last semester, too. Methods print line and next are useful methods for displaying output to the screen and gaining input from the user and can be used in a program using system that out scanner classes respectively true. Do you remember why this would you remember the easy way to tell why this one was true without having to read through the whole text? Yeah, if it's long, if it's too long, I'm not gonna try to sneak something in there. I'm not gonna try to sneak the word not in there somewhere. And they say, oh, that makes it false, right? That I'm not, that I, don't, I don't do that. I don't like to trick you guys, okay? But what I do like to have fun with is, right, Boolean expressions, okay? So if I gave you a, que a question that was a Boolean expression that evaluated to true or false, right, you would ex be expected to know that. There's also this one, right? We talked about this one last semester, where 
I plus plus equals plus plus I evaluates as false and plus plus I equals I plus plus evaluates as true. Uh, I won't, we won't go into a discussion now about why this is, but you know, this was one of those like kind of lesser known concepts that doesn't really come up a whole lot, but is a neat uh, thing to make sure you understand about what happens for the two operators, the plus plus on the back side of a variable and the plus plus on the front side of the variable. Okay. okay. Matching, I love doing matching. It's kind of like multiple choice, but you get to have the same set of multiple choice answers <coughs> uh, for uh, all five questions. All right. So these are some different symbols, right? Notice that, right, B, the answer was used more than once. Just because you have these questions and these answers doesn't mean it always lines up one to one. So if I gave you a section where it was five questions and five answers, does not mean that they're gonna lock, that you can scratch off. Okay, use that one. I'm not gonna use that one again, right? It does, that doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes answers get used more than once. Sometimes, like if I had an E option down here, it would not be used at all. Okay. Uh, question, let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, that, that, is, that is how the MS forms kind of grades that. Uh, so, uh, but part of it is making sure that you understand all of the reasons. So there is, there is, I'll have to look into that. Okay, I, I, I don't know. Normally on a paper exam, uh, I would try to be more consistent in grading those things, and, and I and I will try in this as well. Okay, but I mean, if you, yeah, it should get points off if you do not understand certain reasons. Okay, all right. So, what is the output? or what is a return value, or what exception might get thrown. There's all kinds of ways that we can do this now. It's not just about what is output, but we could also be what is the final value of a variable, or what is returned from a method, right? And so you need to be able to, if I give you a, a code segment or a set of classes with, with code in it, I want you to be able to process through you process through the lines of code and tell me things about like what is output, what is what are different variable values and stuff like that. And we also have exceptions added to our stuff now. So if you have a try catch block, you need to know that the finally section always executes whether an exception occurs or not. So if we have a try catch finally, we try something, no exception happens, we need to know that the finally executes also. We try something, an exception occurs, it gets caught by the catch block, the finally executes also. A try happens, a catch does not catch the exception because it's the wrong exception, the finally still executes also. Okay? All right. You will need to be able to write some short program fragments. It could be a very, it could be a small class. I might ask you to write a small class okay, for an example. All right. How, how to throw an exception, uh, you know, use the methods including constructors of a parent class. So if we need to call the constructor of a parent class, you need to know how to do that using the super keyword. If you need to call the method of a parent class, you need to know how to do that using uh, the super dot method name. All right. Okay. All right. So, and then normally what I do on a paper based exam is I would give you some example system that, and we'll go over some an example of that here, where I would expect you to draw the UML diagram. Uh, 
And I would expect you to also implement some of the system, some particular part of the system in Java code. Uh, the example that we'll go over today is this uh, a store that has products and customers. Um, and we will uh, we will talk about that. OK. So since I can't have you I really can't have you draw the UML diagram. Well, we'll just have to figure out some other way, and I think I have some ideas. All right. So final note. All right, so this is somewhat of a copied slide from previous semesters, but obviously this can't all be closed, can it? Book notes, that's fine. That's closed. But, well, I mean, how are you supposed to take this exam if you don't have a computer, right? If you don't have uh, or if you're taking it on your phone, which I don't suggest you do. I suggest you, if if possible, take this exam on a computer uh, so that uh, you'll have a better chance to type up the various codes and and see things well. OK, uh, now I mean, I guess I don't really I don't really care if you talk to yourself. You just don't talk to anybody else. Don't don't talk to other people. OK, but I do want you to have an open mind and in that vein, I, oh, I don't like that word cheat sheet. I don't like cheat. No, uh, we'll call it notes sheet or something like that. You know, it has to be A4. It must be handwritten uh, and anything printed, photocopied. Oh, this is a holdover. We'll be taken. We'll, you'll, you'll get points taken off. Uh, so here's how we're going to do that with this uh, document. Because how you'd be like, how would you know? How would you know if we printed it or photocopied it? You are going to, I'm gonna, I'm going to have a section of the exam that's gonna have a file upload. And I want you to upload an image of your cheat. I want you to upload two pictures. Uh, I want you, I want you to upload two pictures, okay? One picture, one picture you need to upload is going to be uh, of your your sheet, of your uh, notes sheet. It can be a scanned sheet. It can be a picture. Uh, I guess it could be two if you need to do front and back. Uh, it could be a picture that you take with your phone. I, I don't care how you take the picture. It just needs to be an image that shows me what your sheet looked like. The second thing that you need to upload is a picture of you holding your cheat sheet. So you have a cheat sheet. All right. It has some notes on it. This is one of my grad students, uh, parts of his thesis proposal. OK, and you take a picture of you with your cheat sheet. All right. And you upload that. OK, so that's what I need you to do. That'll be that, like I said, that'll be a file upload on the exam. I'm not going to post any of this to social media. I'm not going to post the picture of you holding your cheat sheet to Facebook. I, I don't do that, okay? It won't be for any purpose other than for for me to see uh, to see who owns what cheat sheet. All right. Okay. So final note, and then we'll come back for questions in just a moment. But let's talk about this store uh, products and customers. Okay. So what we'll do is first we will talk about the UML diagram aspect of this. Others. Oh, Okay. All right. So here, uh, if you haven't ever used this tool before, this draw, it's called it, draw.io. It also is now called diagrams.net. Very, very useful tool for drawing things. Uh, I would become familiar with something like this if I were you because it's so, so useful. Okay. So what are we creating? We're creating a store. Where's my class? There it is. OK. We're creating a store class. And we are going to create customers. 
Uh, actually, you should always make them singular. Okay. And let's say that our store wants, uh, they want some special kinds of customers. They want to have not just normal customers, they want to have what we'll call club customer. What a club customer is, is someone that, uh, that not only, <clears throat> that not only uh, is a customer that comes in and buys something from the store, but we also give them like discounts. You, you know, I mean, I'm assuming some of you shop at Migros, right? Or uh, where else, Carrefour, or what's some other big ones? Uh, Keepa, do they, have, do they still have Keepa or was Keepa bought out by Migros? All of them, I don't remember. But you guys know the places. And you go in and you say, and you say, uh, they ask you for your phone number, right? Or they ask you, do you have a club card, right? A Migros club card. And you tell them the phone number and they put it in and you can get a discount or stuff like that, right? So we want to have special customers that have their uh, information here. Okay. Uh, then we're going to also have some different types of products. So this, this particular store, it's going to be known for, let's see... Uh, let's say it's a uh, food product. Right. And maybe like a clothing product, right? Okay, and that's it, that's it. That's the only stuff that we sell. We don't sell anything besides food products and clothing products, all right? Okay. So these are our classes, and now let's start defining things about the system. So the store is going to keep track of its customers and its club customers, and it's going to keep track of its products and how many of each type there are, uh, some special information in clothing, like what, what's its size, for example. A uh, food product, and I keep some information like you know, calories and stuff like that. But some some restrictions. There are some restrictions on this. So the store, uh, the store is going to keep track of its customers and products. Okay, the customer, the club customer, is going to be a specific type of customer that is someone who's a frequent shopper. Like they've come in here so many times, they come in here so often that they want to get like special discounts and stuff. Uh, but but you don't have to be a club customer to shop at our store. You can just be a regular customer. That's okay. All right, so you can be a regular customer, you can be a club customer, but a club customer is a special type of customer. On the other side, product though, we're only going to keep track of clothing products and food products, and that's it. Like you can't, you cannot be any other type of product. We don't have any other type of product. You cannot be just a normal, just a product. Okay. So product will be its own thing that we cannot be, we cannot create an object of type product. Every product we keep in our store has to be either a clothing product or a food product. Okay. So now let's talk through before we get into attributes based on what i've just told you how would you say some of the relationships between store customer product club customer clothing product and food product what are some of the relationships that should exist Right. Good, good noticing on that one, right? So product is an abstract class because I, what, I, what I said was pr you cannot have something that's just a product. Okay. And by the way, this is how we would normally do this with this italicized word here to indicate that this is an abstract class. 
I'm not going to, I'm not going to, because you guys, it's so hard for these images. If I were to show you a UML diagram as part of a question, and I were to want you to know for certain that this is an abstract class, I would do. Okay, so I would make sure you knew this was an abstract class. Okay. All right. What else you said? Tirana, Tirana, you say a product customer. Many to many. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. That, that's a good one. Let's see. Where are you? Okay, and in UML we could do. It's not really a composition. Do just association. Where's that association one though? Not really a parent child. Let's just do this. Okay. Okay. And what we can do is not title, not item. I want text. Where's my text? Okay, because I want to tell I want to tell what kind, right? So you could do it like this. Right. Now we talked a little bit about this whole. Right, zero. This has to do with whether it's required or not. Okay. Okay. So you have a customer that can purchase many products. A product can be purchased by many customers. Uh, and when we say product here, what we're meaning is a product category. So we're not talking about. Um, uh, we don't mean a specific, uh, like the product class is not saying this is the Snickers bars, right? This like it's we are saying a general thing where it, it will have its name, for example. So I'll just go ahead and write that in here. Right, where the product might might have a name. Okay, and it could be like a Snickers bar. It could be. Uh, what's, what's your what's your favorite candy bar? What? What's your favorite candy bar? My teaching assistant just walked in, and I'm asking him a question. My favorite thoughts? Candy bar. Candy bar. Like oh, so. That must be. Let me think. That's a deep question, actually. <laughs> it's a difficult question, huh? I like most of my bitter chocolates. And bitter, okay. Bitter chocolate, yeah. Yeah. And my favorite. Al Albany. I will go with Albany. Okay, Albany. Okay, so the, yeah, so this could be. Like this product, when we create an object of this, we could be talking about the Snickers, we could be talking about the Albany, we could be talking about any, any you know, anything. Okay, so here's my question. Well, here's a question that I just thought of. Here you have this many to many relationship between customer and product. Why, do, why not between, why not have it like this? Why not have it have a many to many relationship with clothing product and a many to many relationship with food product? What do you think? Is there anything wrong with doing it that way? Tirana, I think you mean trap is going to happen, and you're 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 bringing in actually, and I, you're, that's actually a database thing. Uh, so um, you're actually talking about a topic that we didn't cover in this class, but that's okay. Uh, and if this were the database class, I would say that there you do there is a potential there maybe, but at, in this class, it's something else. So. 
Yeah, it's not – Ridge App, is, you're right. You're right is what I was getting at on this. Is There's nothing wrong with having it done this way, right? It's not like <clears> – it's not like uh, logically you could not implement the system this way. But one, it will be less efficient to uh, – to, um, implement the system using this methodology it's also going to be more confusing to your to your customer to your uh person that you're developing the system for they're going to have a harder time following this okay whereas this will be much more understood <clears throat> okay and also what we'll what we'll see is one of the ways to implement this to say that a customer buys many products and by the way this would normally get a uh a label as well you would have take you would have give it a name to right buys many products uh if you had a specific relationship between customer and this and customer and this then what happens if you want to add a third product type like technology product, like you know, headphones or smartwatches or something, right? Then now you got to have another new relationship. Whereas if you just add a new third product type over here, you don't have to add a new relationship. And when we implement this in the code, one of the ways that we can implement this is by putting a collection of products for each customer that says this is the pro this is the products that they've bought that they're buying, and then. If you gave a special relationship between customer and each subclass, then what would happen is you would have to have a special collection for each, which may just be wasteful. Okay. All right. So we have this relationship between customer and product. Are we, are we done? Is this our, this is our system done? Can we start coding now? Right, we haven't defined who the who, who the children are and the parents are, right? Because we have subclasses and superclasses. You guys remember how to do that? Nope. Yeah. So n notice that this one right here, the the diagrams.net even calls it extends just like in Java and gives us this nice white arrow that we need to have. Okay, so who is related to who? Who is a parent and who is a child in the in, for these classes? Uh, okay, Nestle Shaw, I'm going to go with yours. Definitely going to go with yours. Because remember, the way that this, the way that this uh, parent-child stuff works, if I can get it on there well. Some of these bugs. The way that this parent-child relationship works is... Remember, this type of relationship over here, this association, is what's called an, a has a relationship. So the customer has products. And what we, we could think about it as if you were online shopping and you put it into your shopping basket, you put it into your, uh, what is it, a uh, sipet, right? You put these products into your sipet. Right, and I have those products in my sipet. All right, this type of relationship is what's called an is a relationship. All right, so a club customer is a type of customer. 
So for those, so so a couple of you have said, where is it? Like product is a child of store. A few of you, a few of you have said that. Is a product a type of store? Can you say that a product is a store? Right, no. Does a store have products? Can we say that a store has products? Right, so when we say, when we say that one class has another class, that's a has a relationship. So this kind of relationship. And we won't put arrows on either side of it because this one's a little bit different because it does have more of a one way, what's called a one way relationship. OK. Right. And for this, what we will call this is we will call this a. a one to many relationship, so. where we'll say that a store has many products, but a product really, as far as our system is concerned, because we're only going to store products for Migros at Migros. Okay. What about the relationship between store and customer? Is a customer, is, uh, can we say that a customer is a store or do we say that a customer has a store or do we say that a store is a customer or a store has a customer? That's a lot of options, isn't it? Right, so the same way here, we would say, a store has a customer, and what we can do is we can. Same thing here, a one to many type relationship. Okay. And with very few exceptions, no system is complete until every class is involved in some, at least one relationship with some other class. So we still have a couple of options there at the bottom, the clothing product and the food product. What do you think those guys? Yeah, I, I totally agree with that one. Whoa, that's not what I was doing. So we could do something like this. This is not going to be perfect, but it will work. Okay. All right. So now we have relationships defined for all of our classes. Uh, let's at least give a couple of fields to, to some of our classes. So let's think of some what I call low hanging fruit. Low hanging fruit is the easy one. So a product. An easy thing, another thing that we would have as an attribute. A price, right? And what type of very what type of value should a price be? Some of you are saying to yourselves, double, yeah. It should be a decimal number. Good. Okay. 
Uh, clothing product, we might have a size. Mm. It could be a string because some sizes are uh, some sizes are not numeric, right? Large, for example. A food product, maybe we could have a type. Like, is it a candy? Is it a vegetable? Is it a fruit? Uh, that might be a string. Mm. Customer, I don't know, maybe a name. Okay, this one's going to be a fun one. Okay, so club customer, we're going to keep their phone number, right? We don't keep phone numbers of regular customers. We're going to do phone number. What's the best data type for a phone number? Yeah. This is kind of a trick question because there is no one size fits all. Uh, that's a phrase that we use in America. Uh, there's there's not a one right answer for how a phone number should be stored. OK, uh, there are lots of different ways that a phone number can be stored. It can be stored as a string. It can be stored as a long, as some of you are suggesting. Uh, it could be stored as one, two, one, two. It could be stored as multiple integers. So if you think about it, you know, uh, if you have the phone number could be made up of the country code plus the area code plus that you know, it could be all the different parts of it put together and each of them stored individually as integers. There's all kinds of ways that I've seen uh, phone numbers stored. Right. And I agree with you, Dokon, uh, and some of the others that have said string as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and just make it string for the purposes of this. I will tell you, though, Dokon. I will, and I'll tell you the other thing in this. I have seen websites where it asked you to ask me to put in my phone number, and it made it a numeric field that I could click up and down on an arrow to increase it by one or decrease it by one. Uh, so I was like, why? Why are you doing this as a, as a number? That doesn't make any sense. So, all right, let's see. So we got at least one for all of them. Oh, store. All right, so our store might have a uh a name like a migros that would be a string and then it might have a, a and i you know i did something wrong in all this this should be this should be a dash somebody made it somebody i don't remember who somebody pointed out that these needed to be private variables and you are absolutely right we should make these private so that minus sign makes it private might have like an address as well. Oh. There we go. All right. And then you would also do methods in here as well. <clears throat> OK, so if you needed to, if you if you wanted to have. Methods. All right. So now we have our system well defined. Oh, and look, it's perfect timing, 220. OK, so now that we have this part of it defined, in the next uh, the next section, what we'll do is we will take this UML diagram and we will uh, we'll bring it into and implement por portions of it into code. OK, all right, so let's take a break and I will see you guys at 230.